All right, testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing mic one, two, three, four, five. Testing mic one, two, three, four, five. Testing. Hopefully, everybody can hear this with no problem. Again, getting things ready to go. We are just about ready to kick off for our 832 updates, the 54321. Okay, looking pretty good at this point. No problems being seen here. Uh, looking good for the time being. If you are just joining us, feel free to drop your comments uh, into the section for, again, watching what goes on uh, into the Mid-South area. We've got plenty of areas of rain showers north of us. We'll talk more about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. So it looks like things are doing pretty good at this time. So we'll go ahead and hop on here and get people an idea as to uh, what's going on at this point. If you are just joining us, again, it is Sunday evening. Things are fairly well on the quiet side for right now. We do have the possibility of some stronger weather coming our way as we get into around the area coming up into tonight and early tomorrow. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and start the show for tonight. If you are just joining us, we are live on Periscope, Facebook, and Twitter on my own Facebook page. And thanks to everybody for checking in and joining us for this evening. This is our exclusive video weather blog. It's called Weather Overtime. Good opportunity for you to ask questions and to figure out a little more about what's going on with the forecast. Got the possibility of some stronger storms into the Mid-South coming up later on this evening. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Uh, no severe weather to talk about directly in the Mid-South as of the time we are recording this at about maybe 8.30, just a little bit after that time. is just about 8.34, starting this a little bit early for tonight. Don't have a lot going on, again, directly in the Mid-South area. Pretty quiet in and around downtown Memphis on the Cotton Exchange camera as we take a look over portions of downtown Memphis. A little on the hazy side, not doing too bad, panning from the area around Front Street and coming around to the area around Beale Street in just a little bit. Downtown lit up quite nicely. FedEx Forum coming into view there. And a lot of clouds up and around portions of the Mid-South, but we're just not seeing too much of anything in the way of rain at all at this point so far. A little bit on the breezy side out there. Old Glory up on top of the Peabody Hotel coming into view. And you can see that standing straight out as we have some pretty breezy conditions into parts of the area for right now. So we do see, again, some fairly quiet conditions with the exception of the wind uh, out there into the area. Thanks to everybody for joining us on Periscope, Twitter, and Facebook for tonight. Let's take another hop around the area from downtown Memphis. This big river crossing lit up quite nicely. West Memphis, Arkansas, seen back in the background there. A little bit on the hazy side, some fog and haze out there, but really not seeing too much more than that at this point in time. But we may be looking for more activity in the way of clouds and rainfall as we get into later on tonight. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Hilton East Memphis camera, I-240 and Poplar. Again, pretty quiet, good visibility all the way out to around Memphis International Airport. Lights there on the horizon. And so far not seeing anything the way of rain on the roadways. It's humid, it's a little breezy, but it's not really doing all that bad for the current time, so looking pretty good. Again, good evening to everybody who's joining us on Facebook for tonight. If you can't stick around for the whole forecast. Here's what it looks like in a nutshell. Temperatures again going back into the lower 70s as we head into tomorrow. Mid 60s as we get into around Tuesday and mid 50s possibly as we head into around the area close to around the midweek hours. Chances of showers and thunderstorms should be dwindling as we head out of the picture going into around the middle part of this next week. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit as those winds switch around, temperatures drop. This is right about normal for this time of the year. This is going a bit below normal, not exactly an Arctic blast, but considering we were near 80 degrees today, Kind of nice to kind of turn that down by just a little bit. Taking a look on radar, nothing going on in the metro area. Likewise, we're not seeing much of anything going on down across parts of northern Mississippi. And West Tennessee also is relatively quiet. Now, we do have a little bit more activity going on into around. Okay, touch screens, sometimes they can get a little touchy so to speak, pardon the pun, but that's very much on the true side. Thunderstorms crossing the area pretty close to the I-55, what is that, I-24 junction back up to the south of Cape Girardeau, some pretty good amounts of lightning taking place in this location. Don't have anything directly severe, again, directly in the Mid-South. We do have that line of showers developing a little further on down to the south. Let me put this in motion real quick so you can see a little bit more about what that looks like. Again, the thunderstorms, the heaviest thunderstorms back up just to the north of the boot heel, back into around southeast Missouri, west of I-55, that is making its way toward I-55 at this time, and going to continue again to make its way 
uh, pretty close to the Sykeston area, right over Dexter right now. So again, some pretty good amounts of thunder taking place here. North of Cotton Hill, some of this could drift on down toward the New Madrid area within about the next several minutes. So definitely something to keep an eye on there if you are going to be traveling up I-55. More thunderstorms taking place even farther to the north, Paducah. Parts of the Wabash Valley in Indiana going to be getting a lot more activity for tonight. And parts of this rain goes all the way up into the Great Lakes, the St. Lawrence Seaway, and into around New England for tonight. But the main possibility of anything involving thunderstorms is going to be around and south of I-70, St. Louis, down through, again, western parts of Kentucky, southern Illinois, and eventually into southeastern parts of Missouri. Now, as this develops... As this gets a little bit closer to us into later on tonight, there will be more chances of rainfall developing west of Jonesboro, south of Mountain View, and Mountain Home, and into around the area around Ravenden Springs. And then all of that is going to be making its way through the Mid-South as we go into later on tonight. And that's not all. We've got even more activity coming our way as we get into the overnight hours. But again, more chances of rainfall like this developing along a cold front, which is going to be giving us more chances of rainfall as we get into the rest of the forecast forecast toward tomorrow. So if you have any plans for outdoors for the next few days, expecting more chances of rainfall like this and into the course of the rest of the afternoon. Numerous watch boxes going on north of us. The yellow indicates a severe thunderstorm watch way back over to around southern Indiana, southwest Ohio, north central parts of Kentucky, and the red around Paducah. A lot of this has been canceled, so we don't see much in the way of the tornado watch boxes. Now, the Mid-South, way on down here, so we don't have anything directly in effect. So why are we telling you about this if this is way out of our area? Because we are the station that is on your side. And we want to make certain you know a little bit more about what's going on. So this is the threat extent for right now. But again, that could be changing as we go into later on tonight. And this is something we'll be watching very carefully, especially along and north of I-40 as we get into later on. Now, so far, the Storm Prediction Center, which issues these watches, doesn't really give us anything in the way of hope for anything major taking place for tonight. But we are still going to be watching very carefully. The main threat that we have is this yellow shaded category, the scale over here. This is a slight risk category for areas just around Dyer County, just north of that area, back up into to around that area we were just talking about, southeast Missouri, southern Illinois, and back into around much of Kentucky. That's going to be the worst of the worst. And as of right now, from what we saw earlier, it is down from an enhanced mode. So we don't have a lot going on, but this is still a big widespread area when it comes to this possibility of severe weather. Here's the thing we're going to have to watch out for for the next several hours. The next forecast from the Storm Prediction Center should be coming up here in the next couple of hours. So this is already a little bit on the old side. But as we get into tonight, there is that possibility that we could see a threat here in the Mid-South. It's not much, but along and mainly north of I-40, Covington, Tyronza, Jonesboro, Blytheville, Dyersburg, Ripley, Tennessee, the boot heel, this green area that you see here, that's kind of the least of the possibility of severe weather. That's a, what's called a marginal threat. And again, this all comes in scales going worse as you get up into those red alert colors up there. The main threat, again, will be well to the north of us. So Dyer County, back up to around portions of Sykeston, Paducah, that's where you're going to be seeing the main threat. And the main threat for tonight could be tornadoes damaging winds and large hail. So we could see, again, that potential throughout the evening. But if you live in and around this area just north of Memphis and Shelby County, this is where we see the potential, small though it may be, something we need to pay attention to here to watch out what goes on. Now, if you want to be like some people and call this hype, go right ahead, although the onus is on you to actually prove that we're hyping the weather on stuff like this. This is a professional meteorologist giving you what's going on with the weather. And if you want to call it hype, parroting some other TV stations, accusations, well, that's your option to do so. But I call it being professional as much as possible here. Now, into around the rest of the forecast, this green area just indicates the possibility of just thunderstorms down off the map around the area here. And that threat will be around through Monday and right on in through about Tuesday. We'll be seeing chances of showers and thunderstorms. The cause of all this is going to be a stationary front stuck across the area. We're on the south side of that front right now, so we've got very warm conditions still in the lower to mid-70s out there. 
and that's again way above where we should be for this time of the year so definitely not feeling like November should no question about that rest of the area for tonight let's go ahead and run the numbers that dividing line you see right there that's the front we're going to be watching winds here coming in from out of the south winds on the other side of this front coming in from out of the north and that'll be moving through the mid-south right about after midnight slowly dropping its way on through by daybreak tomorrow Todd Demers on the air with your forecast most of that front should be sitting down to the south so that should be the irritation point for more of the rainfall down this direction more than anything else but we will see more chances of rainfall from breakfast through about lunchtime. Less of a chance as we go through here. If that starts to lift its way back up to the north, and it looks like part of it's going to, right about the time you pick up the kids from school, start to head home from work, that's where you start getting into more chances of rain, and maybe even some thunderstorms popping up as we get into tomorrow afternoon, evening, and right about News Channel 3 at 10. Don't forget about Jim Jagger's forecast coming up on News Channel 3 at 10 tomorrow night. And chances of rainfall will linger into the Mid-South right Right on in through about Tuesday morning, but it's going to be much cooler out there with temperatures going to be getting a little bit on the cooler side out there. So looking pretty good across the area as we get into the next few days, as you saw on the three day forecast, we've got a lot more improved temperatures out there. To wrap it up for you on the seven day forecast again, pretty mild into the next couple of days back in the lower 70s at first with chances of showers and thunderstorms. Now, the potential is here. Does this mean the entire day is going to be a washout? No, I think we may get some gaps in here, some coverage, less of a chance of rainfall out there, but it's the potential of this is still going to be with us, so that's why it's in the forecast all the way on through the entire day tomorrow. Likewise, as we go into Tuesday, we see again temperatures back in the lower 60s and even cooler conditions as we go toward Wednesday. That front settles down far enough away from us to allow some of that very cool Canadian air to start making its way into the Mid-South area. Now, as we get into the rest of the week, we see some nicer conditions drier air shaping up for the end of the week. Friday night football last week was looking pretty soggy. Right now the forecast is looking much better but very cool around kickoff for the big day coming up on next Saturday for Veterans Day, for the holiday, outdoor dedication, prayer services, remembered ceremonies, parades, all that type of stuff to honor Americans veterans. That looks like it's going to be pretty good. Temperatures going back into the lower 60s, but unfortunately toward afternoon and evening, we see that potential of some showers and some thunderstorms out across the area here. So that again could be a bit of a spoiler. If you have any plans for outdoors, definitely want to keep an eye on the forecast there. Now extending this out a little farther into next week, much cooler, a little bit more like November should be. These will be a little bit below normal for this time of the year, but at least we'll cool things off and things will be looking a lot nicer into the Mid-South where these numbers are concerned. We hit near 80 degrees today across much of the Mid-South, so tomorrow will continue to be very much on the mild side, but we'll be dropping those temperatures over the course of the next several days, so looking pretty cool out there all the way on through. If you've got weather pictures, we'd love to see them. I'd love to feature them on programs like Daybreak to show everybody your photographic prowess out there, but we don't really have a great deal of pictures to show, unfortunately because nobody's really sending anything in. So if you've got weather pictures, please send them in to me, and I'll feature them on Daybreak and also on our social media pages. All you have to do is tweet them to aonic underscore WREG3. On Instagram, aonic no underscore necessary WREG3. And, of course, on Facebook, if you're watching it on there, Austinonic WREG. You can watch on Periscope. Can't really trade uh, pictures all that much, but definitely want to, if you send them in, we'll be glad to feature them out there, and we'd love to see what you see in the Mid-South or points beyond. We've got a lot of people who send in a lot of other stuff out there as well. Tune in for the forecast with what's left of the weekend on the EAB network, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3, and of course, bright and early tomorrow morning, I'll be on with Bob and Josh on their new time. Talk Back Live debuted last week at 8 o'clock in the mornings, 8 to 10, Monday through Friday on AM 730. If you can't listen on the radio because you're too far away from the signal, dial them up online, talkbacklivenetwork.org. A great opportunity to learn more about sports chat in the Mid-South, news, community events, and of course, yours truly with the weather out there. Be glad to have you along for the ride. And of course, News Channel 3's weather expert Todd Demers will have more on your forecast coming up bright and early tomorrow morning on Daybreak. That's about to do it for weather overtime for Sunday evening. Again, decently quiet for right now. We will be watching for the potential of stronger weather to be heading our direction into the course of the evening, especially overnight. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3. Have multiple ways of making certain that you can get your warnings across the area. You've got, again, the weather radio.
radio, you've got your cell phone, have other ways to get the information in case one of those has issues. You definitely want to be able to have an opportunity to get the warnings from the National Weather Service to make certain you stay safe out there. So please remember about that. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks to NFL, we will be on a little bit later tonight at about 10.30 or so. Kristen Holloway has more on the news coming up at News Channel 3 Late Edition. Mike Sadie has a busy day in sports and, of course, I'll be on with your complete weekend-ending forecast, and that'll be on starting at 10.30 tonight on News Channel 3. So join us for more on that. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for tonight's edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime.